New times are here. The sands of time seem out of stock. Where once was lush, now lies bare rock. I come from a continent that is both young as it is of age. One that has known both religion as it has faith. The home of legendary deltas like the Okavango. From its searing hot deserts filled with ancient trees to its grounded rhythm, looming cities and streets. <laughs> the origin of your essence lies here, untamed and broken, its potential dormant, resilient. Covering 20% of Earth's land area, the African continent is the cradle of human existence. And with that, the oldest inhabited territory on Earth. Our fertile lands are the very backbone of the world's wealth on one side, and on the other, a spiritual thread through the lives of many. Much like our endless deserts. Decades have been buried by the sands of time. Since the signs of early humans, nearly 200,000 years past, we've seen decades of heroism decades of wonder. Decades in which our continent flourished as much as we did. Only time could tell that an age of restoration was yet to come. We've entered an age in which landscape degradation is so severe that African countries have jointly vowed to restore its precious soils. An age of deprivation, of drought, indeed. But more importantly, an age of realization. Are we aware? Are we aware of 54% of African soil slowly being turned to nothing but agglutinated dust? Economic downturn as a result of a global pandemic driving these lands into deep, deep recession. Are we aware? Are we aware of creeping deserts, failing crops, loss of fertile ground, wetlands, cattle? The list doesn't stop. But above all, are we aware that we as a people have overcome such hurdles? Proverb says, Yule ambaye mbegu hazijaota, haachi kupanda. One whose seeds have not sprouted does not give up planting. May I present to you the Grand African Green Up, our decade on ecosystem restoration. point out to you in ancient Akan knowledge, Sankofa, and in the same way much of our tribal knowledge states, the knowledge of the past must never be forgotten. Goja Goja, who means a matumbo, 
Because in this decade of landscape restoration, time and tide wait for no one. It is evident we must protect our most precious possession, our fertile African soil. In the coming decade from 2021 to 2030, 30 African countries are dedicated to restoring degraded land in a coalition named the AFR 100 Initiative. 126 million hectares of land, equivalent to the total size of South Africa. All this within the next 10 years, and we're not done counting. Ambitious plans come with ambitious people, an eager 1.2 billion people with a median age of 19.7. Africa's population is young, future-proof, and willing to rebuild and restore the lands that previous generations have lost. And restore they will. This decade of ecosystem restoration is a moment of reconciliation with our environment. And this generation's work regarding our lands is already bearing fruit. Working towards the same goals as the AFR 100 initiative, many projects are underway and are already bringing back life to our continent's degraded landscapes, providing food security, jobs, and a reason to stay for the millions who live across its shores. I'm Simon Elia Chiwanga. Uh, I come from Papua District. I was born in Papua District. In central Tanzania, as you travel, you'll find a number of uh, spectacular features, rock formation, for example. Now, to travel from Mpapa to Dodoma, you'd go through thick forest, and you avoided to travel at, to, uh, at night, even if you're in a vehicle. But now, you can see uh, animals, anything from a distance, all clear. So deforestation, reckless deforestation has taken place uh, miserably bad. So I've seen impoverishment of uh, forests, of uh, land, you know, cultivable land, uh, water sources, and, and it pained me. There is a huge difference, uh, huge difference between then and now. So we started the community development work, and uh, tree planting uh, was, was part of it. Those who are, who call themselves theologians, you know, those who study the, the, the Word of God, uh, talk about holistic ministry, which means you, you save the whole person not only spiritual, but also physical. And that has been my standpoint. That has been my driving force. So in 2010, uh, I founded uh, LEAD Foundation. I founded the, 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 the organization empty-handed. But I believe it was my hobby horse, giving what I can, you know. And I gave. I, g I gave whatever, you know, I was able to give. Siki High is the answer, is the real answer to, uh, to, our, to our environmental situation here. That was with uh, the regional commissioner, the governor of this region where we are, we are operating this morning. And I said, sir, we've trained 700 uh, village champions for you in the region. We we'll still have uh, about 600 to go. And at, that, at, at the point we have reached now, your region has taken off. It will become green. These projects, where mature trees are grown back from remnant stamps, where informing our people and training our farmers are the number one priority. These projects are the necessary and scalable examples we need. They do not only regreen the environment, at the same time, they provide our people with the necessary and alternative sources of income. As a son of a single mother, I was not able to pay my university fees when I was in second year. So in my last year at the university, I decided to conduct a research 
to find out why the yield from my mother's farm was not able to support my education. It was revealed that sudden decline of agricultural productivity was attributed to one bush burning for survival. And the trees which serve as carbon sinks are also being cut down for charcoal. All these things brings about traumatic climate change in the area and the degradation of the land. So we decided to find out the best and alternative revenue source for our women who are really engaged in these activities. And we came out with this business model, integrated beekeeping and cashew plantation. We recruit them from the various communities that we work with. We train them on the best practices of integrated beekeeping and cashew plantation. We buy the product from them, process, package, and distribute to the market. This was to create sustainable jobs because we cannot stop them from bush burning, illegal cutting of trees, and overgrazing without giving them an alternative sustainable source of income just to substitute for their activities. And it really works to perfection. To regreen our environment, we need to create the sustainable jobs of tomorrow so that we can nurture our children in an environmentally friendly way. Our children hold the future of our continent and with our sustainable sources of income comes the environmental education of our youth. We are called to be good stewards of the earth. And you know what good stewards do? Good stewards take care of the land, take care of the planet and leave it better than they found it. They leave it in a good shape. I will not harm nature because I'm supposed to be a good steward and to make sure that we leave this planet better than we found it and make sure that we cultivate the land and make sure that it's beautiful for the next generation. I took children to one of the streams in Nairobi that is actually polluted. And I remember a question that one of those children asked me was that, who did this? So it tells you that children really want to do something about the environment, but we have to make them feel connected to nature. And we also need to make them understand the challenges that nature is facing, and then make sure that we involve them as part of the solution, because we cannot leave them behind when it comes to restoring our landscapes. Africa is the continent of youth. There's power in youth. So I feel that the youth are gonna be key to any idea that is gonna, you know, take root. My name is Rocky Dawuni. I am a musician from Ghana. I'm a believer in uh, using the leverage of music uh, for social transformation. A lot of times, my focus too has been on empowerment. You know, I've always believed that uh, a, so a society is only strong when you are able to encourage and mint new leaders. So I try to leverage that power in terms of opening up conversation with people. We were born into this incredible, beautiful space, this earth. You put a seed in the ground, it grows. The earth gives to us freely. There's the water that flows. If it's clean enough, you fetch it. You know, you can drink water. You can use some to cook. So all these resources are given to us, are part of our ecosystem. You know, and I feel that an evolved species is the one that really recognizes these as assets and does everything that they can to make sure that you don't abuse it. In all my advocacy, I felt that I needed to just be a catalyst for people to take action because in the long run, it's about protection of life and protection of creation. I am proud that uh, we taught lots of children about saving the environment and they are still eager to know more and come back to get more knowledge about that. When kids are taught about saving nature, they go back to their local communities 
and uh, they can spread the message. I dream of a world where we can put people and planet above profits. We need to make sure that everyone is being mindful of how they will leave this planet for the next generations. And that's my dream for the world today. A people that will make sure that we are mindful of how we leave this planet for all generations to come. A dream shared by every single one of us. We're ready to build a green African future. One where our people and planet go hand in hand. Well, the isolation of the environment is more than plus important than it becomes an exigence. It is faux. We have no choice. We have the interest to reboise our environment. If not, we will go to the mur. Le monde va compter demain sur l'Afrique, parce que l'avenir c'est l'Afrique, ça il faut le dire. L'Afrique peut, peut nourrir un tiers de la planète, si vraiment ses potentialités sont bien exploitées. Moi je crois qu'il faudra tout simplement davantage sensibiliser la jeune population. Et pour ce faire, il faut que l'enfant, dès le bas âge, qu'on lui inculte des, des, des valeurs environnementales. Donc il est possible d'avoir une belle Afrique avec toutes les potentialités. Maintenant, je demande aux jeunes de rester chez eux, d'y croire et de développer cette Afrique-là. En encouraging everyone concerned, everyone concerned. If you have an idea, think about it, consult about it, pray about it, and then rise with an answer. Do it. If you wait for clear answers on everything, you'll never get there. Do it. It's in the course of doing that our vision gets clarified, sharpened, strengthened, and focused. Where we have reached now is a point of no return. There's no reason at all of doubting. It can be done. It can be done. Play your part. of the climate crisis can be solved by nature-based solutions. Landscape restoration is not just a solution for the African continent. The world's forests, along with its oceans, absorb enormous amounts of carbon dioxide circulating in our atmosphere. Congo's mighty rainforest, along with the Amazon, are effectively the Earth's lungs. And protecting these lungs is the crucial task at hand. Ecosystems support all life on Earth. So the healthier our ecosystems are, the healthier the planet and its people will be. As part of our restoration initiative, the Democratic Republic of Congo has pledged to restore millions of hectares of degraded land in the next decade. Across our continent, these examples exist not only in the Congo. Countries such as Tanzania, Madagascar, Ghana, Kenya, and Senegal have similar ambitions. Today's urge to protect and restore damaged ecosystems has never been more crucial. The natural world sustains all life on Earth, and with healthier ecosystems, we become a healthier species. Landscape restoration is the mandatory future investment that affects and yields its profits along every step of the way. The task at hand is to restore to productivity 126 million hectares of African soil within the next decade. A fulfillment of the great responsibility bestowed on a continent that proudly thrives on tomorrow. I want 
want you to understand we all share the same responsibility. This future will not make it to become our history because we have already started an unprecedented endeavor here. Soon, her waters will reach the seeds and when they sprout, <laughs> we will believe. She'll show us flowers that have never bloomed creating opportunities no one could ever assume. The nutrients in her soils will provide, creating fields of green within a fortnight. She can draw rains that can pour through the night, creating succulent grasses so wildlife can thrive. She breathes the planet. She breathes us life. She is the answer to prevent our demise. She give us power, she give us life. All she wants in return is for us to survive. <laughs>